Project Seraph Log 1. Professor Thomas Dawn reporting. After years of preparation, we are ready to enter the trial phase of our work. The subject quota outlined in Requisition Order 2125 has been fulfilled. Surgical enhancements are scheduled on candidates deemed most likely to survive the Thargoid systemic interface. There is a sense of excitement here at the facility. My team recognize that we are on the threshold of something truly remarkable. While our competitors chase rumors and run lab tests on curious probes, we are working towards the first human-piloted Thargoid vessel. Of course, our research here will be the first of many such projects. This hostile race has plagued human space for hundreds of years. These creatures, so foreign, so fundamentally alien in every aspect, have sought to dominate us. The technology used in these attempts has been devastating. Our work could establish the first example of humanity harnessing Thargoid machines for its needs. Over time, we will continue to assimilate the aliens' technology until we have stripped everything we want. Then we shall lead the mission to wipe them out forever. The mycoid virus merely bought us time. Our true victory will be absolute. Project Serif Log 6, Professor Thomas Dawn reporting. Today, my team completed the first live tests of human integration with a Thargoid ship. Subject A1 entered the Thargoid vessel at 0800 and initiated the interface procedure with assistance from the witnessing Dr. Pierce and Dr. Hanley. A1's vital signs were stable for 43 seconds at which point there was a major electrical surge through the central nervous system. Both witnesses observed the subject suffer a violent seizure which ultimately proved fatal. The Thargoid vessel appeared unaffected. The next five tests were similar in outcome. While unfortunate, our analysts were able to identify where this surge originates. Subject A7 showed more promise, again witnessed by Pierce and Hamlin. Adjustments were made to A7's spinal port to suppress the energy surge. 45 seconds after initiation, an electrical spike occurred which remained within safety limits. A7 reported some discomfort, but was able to proceed with vessel initiation. At this point, the Thargoid vessel emitted a low whine, I suppose. Signs of activity briefly flickered on the hull's external frame. Both witnesses reported A7 crying out once before expiring, whereupon the vessel returned to a dormant state. Dr. Pierce is adamant the subject said, it won't let me, but Dr. Hamlin could not confirm this. We're still waiting for telemetry on a surface test to determine exactly what killed the subject. Adjustments will be made to the next test subject in response to these findings. Project Serif Log 9, Professor Thomas Dawn reporting. The fourth day of testing has concluded. The further revisions to our surgical couplings are finally beginning to show promise. My team isolated a systemic membrane in the Thargoid design, which acts as a defense mechanism, akin to a software firewall. While we were able to theorize a way to counteract this mechanism, there was one variable which could not be defined without a live test. Subject D1's primary neural implant was calibrated accordingly. I regret that D1's test ended poorly, but we received the information we needed. Subject D2's test 
used the recalibrated couplings. Her introduction to the Thargoid vessel proceeded smoothly, and as with A7, the hull's external frame responded visually. Dr. Pierce and Dr. Hamlin witnessing both reporting D2 as responsive. 76 seconds into the test, the craft powered down once more. D2 departed the craft with help but standing, the sight of which inspired applause from the team on the ground. D2 is now in the infirmary, exhausted but physically unharmed. Her brief statement implied a connection with the vessel which proved emotionally difficult to process. Our research technicians are preparing limbic augments for future subjects. The rest of today's scheduled tests will go ahead as planned while these augments are prepared. It is important to acquire additional data for our surgeons, improving the efficiency of future subject enhancement. Project Serif, Log 14, Professor Thomas Dorn reporting. There has been considerable progress in our work. After an initially unremarkable series of tests, Subject H8 successfully interfaced with the Thargoid vessel. 93 seconds into the test, the craft moved approximately 18 feet from its docking props and hovered in place. The flight was stable and accompanied by a gentle hum. I would describe the sound as subdued, as though the vessel had been brought to heel at last. The landing, 28 seconds later, was abrupt, but only superficial damage was sustained. H8 is unconscious but stable under the care of the medical team. Dr. Hamlin and Dr. Tao, witnessing, were shaken but unharmed. Subject H9's test has been postponed while the Thargoid ship is returned to its dock. The whereabouts of D2 remains unconfirmed. She may be a stowaway. The only ship to have departed recently belongs to one Commander Heiford, following a delivery of potential subjects. Captain Stenson, believes the commander is complicit, but I am not convinced. Highford lacks the character to betray us and is quite aware of the consequences for doing so. Regardless, black flight operatives are already tracking him down. Honor. Project Serif, Log 27. Professor Thomas Dorn reporting. Subjects V1 through V9 Attempted to interface with the Thargoid vessel today. No measurable response was seen for any of these tests. I have decided to temporarily suspend the test phase of the project. Since subject H8's connection and subsequent death two days later, the Thargoid vessel has entered a state of dormancy. It is as though all internal power sources are spent we may as well be plugging our subjects into a rock. A new Thargoid craft is required if our work here is to continue. I have identified a suitable system to begin our search. Black flight operatives will depart shortly in advance of our research party. The recent report of a commander encountering a Thargoid vessel in the Pleiades is intriguing. I only hope this was not a singular event or some misunderstood data. Thargoid vessels scouting human space would significantly improve our chances of capturing one of their ships. Our time frame is likely to be slashed, of course. I fear our limited success is worth a few more years at best. The witch will not be pleased with the lack of tangible results, despite our initial progress. Still, one must remain optimistic. Our understanding of Thargoid interface mechanisms has improved considerably. Plenty of enhanced test subjects remain in our care. Dr. Tao is writing a paper discussing their surgical procedures which should greatly benefit Azimuth's medtech department. All Project Seraph needs is a little luck. 
I am not so proud as to withhold a prayer asking for that luck. Perhaps the gods will smile upon us. Take off the mice.